once-in-a-lifetime chance. The expectation is so high for this car. And the excitement level is so high for this car. A Corvette has to be a very good grand touring vehicle. Um, you have to be able to, to go uh, get groceries at the grocery store and then go conquer the We dreamed about it for years, but I would say 30 years ago, no one in a million years would have dreamed about us developing this at the Nürburgring. Being at the Nürburgring is the toughest test for a vehicle period. And the reason for that is we have all sorts of events during one lap. So one lap of this, you're gonna reach the top speed of the vehicle. You're gonna reach maximum ladder acceleration and very high speeds. I think it's something like 15 corners on this track, your max lap acceleration at over 90 miles an hour. I know those 15, like 12 of them are over 120. You can't find that in North America. If the car is just slightly not dialed in, it exacerbates it tremendously here. We, it's a small problem on normal tracks or on a highway. It seems like a big problem here. I mean, and it's good for development engineers because it points out very clearly, very quickly, this is something we need to improve. Right, what else are we gonna throw on the pile? Um, but I also wanted to see if I could get that um, same steering event that I had. I wanted to look at the data in that just to see exactly what happened. So you, you were turning the corner and the, the entire time you were to stay away from center into the corner, you had higher efforts than you expected. Rather than being linear, it was just, it was sort of increasing and then, then dropping off. It felt unusual and didn't feel as it had. Okay. And it was, it was like I, I had confused the car somehow. So which run, like was this? Do you, do you this was my first run on the water set. When you look at the group of guys who've come here, it's a great team of people who have all sort of coming together and we've all got this one goal of, of getting that car better, getting it faster here on the racetrack at the Nürburgring. We bring it to the Nürburgring because it exercises everything from a track perspective, but we also take the cars on the Autobahn while we're here because we want it to be very comfortable at any speed on the Autobahn. We want it to be very comfortable um, on the kind of roads that you see in Europe. I was just saying, Brian, I, I did a, a Z51 versus the C8 here on the country roads. Oh, and so yeah. some of the roads that are windy and really quick and, I mean, I loved it on the track and everything yesterday, but that'll jump out at anybody that drives a car anywhere. You know, you don't have to be on the uh, Nurburgring. Yeah, we're, we're quickly learning. We don't have to look backwards anymore. Prior generation Corvettes um, with front engine have achieved such high levels of performance and we feel like we've gotten to where physics uh, demand us to move to the new architecture and we're seeing the results uh, with the mid-engine in what we're able to achieve uh, in the car. It behaves exactly like we wanted a mid-engine car to behave. It's just fundamentally different how it changes direction versus the front wheel drive cars that we have. The 
location of the center of gravity is different. So your perception of how the car rotates and translates is different. You've got a lot more weight in the back now, so you can start to use a lot more of the acceleration. You can ramp up some of the uh, engine parameters to get more torque to the ground. From mid-corner to corner exit, you're able to apply much more throttle than a front-engine Corvette. Um, where the balance is 50-50 as opposed to 60-40. The way that this car gets off corners, how it accelerates when you get on the throttle and shift the load onto the rear, uh, it's just, it's amazingly improved over anything we've done before. It's so much easier to place in the corners and the precision of where you can put the car is different. When you're sitting on the center of gravity of a car, the car is rotating about you. You're not sitting out in the periphery and the car rotates about a point distant from you. Because ultimately, the Corvette is about providing a driving experience. And so we're trying to take that uh, to the next level. To me, the driving experience is, is excellent. You know, the way that you, the feedback that you're getting from both ends of the car, the way that the car is driving into the corner, the way the car is turning around you, you feel like you are the, the focal point inside the vehicle, which, you know, th there's definitely been a unique characteristic about driving every Corvette, whether that's been a C5, a C6, a C7. Now this mid-engine car is really quite a step change, but I feel that they've really nailed it. You know, they've, they've nailed the concept and the feel of the car, particularly on track. And, you know, that's, that's really where my experience is. I think people will see the benefits of why we move to mid-engine very quickly when they drive the car. There's a lot more technology in the car than we've ever had um, in a Corvette. The development of that technology and how everything works together and integrates to enhance that driver experience, that's really what the team's kind of focused on. ELSD development, steering, ABS, transmission, engine team members, everything the driver experiences, feels, touches is affected and we're able to tune all of those things on the fly to enhance that driver experience. The approach was to get everybody together at the track, which typically our ride and handling group and our controls group and our energy group sort of doing each of their own thing. And then we would come together and put the car back together. With this car, um, we're all at the track at the same time. So that change has been in for a little bit? Because like, I don't think you guys have updated it. Okay. Because you're getting a lot of like low desal. So we just cranked that guy up. Yeah, we had the opposite where like that situation was actually underbraked because it was holding the brake. Right. The team synergy using kind of different parameters and new ideas, new technology, and that's really part of the teamwork. That's part of the chemistry that makes things happen. Everything is integrated. Everything is so tightly packaged. Uh, you can't move one thing in the inside of the car without affecting a whole bunch of other things. Those people sharing ideas about all the different um, technologies we have on the car and how they can all come together. And every time you get in the car, it was a little bit better. It was a big day to step back from that and say, okay, we're there. And now we've got this bandwidth that we can work in to get the car just right. There's, there's so many components, the integration level, the level of detail where traction control is interacting with the transmission, with the suspension. It's coming together with such smoothness and refinement that I think it's unlike anything else we've done. This team, as one of the most high-powered teams I think we've ever had doing development of a vehicle, so um, congrats to you guys. A brand new transmission, a mid-engine new architecture, and for all those things to come together and, and be able to have that proof of the pudding at the hardest track in the whole world uh, yesterday says a lot about the whole team and, and how hard you guys have worked to get to this point. All the work that we're doing right now is very fine-tuning uh, to, to make sure that at that very edge of the envelope, the car is very well refined, very drivable. So we are, we are almost done. <laughs>
After the first few days here, it's kind of become clear to me that there's no question the C8 is going to be a revolutionary jump from the C7. It's going to open a lot of people's eyes on how well General Motors can make a exotic sports car and actually perform at an extremely high level. There's no question in my mind. This car is not evolutionary. It's revolutionary. And you only get one chance.